Welcome everyone to our last weekend of the church year as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. Uh, this is the last uh, Sunday or, or Thursday in our uh, liturgical church year and the first Sunday of Advent will begin our first Sunday in the new liturgical year. So uh, welcome today. We're glad that you are here and with us. A couple of uh, quick announcements before we begin with our service is that we will be doing communion at home again this week. So please make sure you have your communion elements uh, ready, whatever it is that you have uh, at home to use as elements. Uh, that'd be great. Also, we are continuing to um, be about our stewardship campaign and transforming our vision. That's the theme of it. And you might have uh, recalled last week uh, having a chance to... Um, see some videos. Well, those videos are going to continue again this week as well. And just as a side note, this is all the technology the staff has given me to do worship services. And I don't have a green screen, just a gold wall. So anyways, we're in the midst of our uh, Transforming Our Vision stewardship campaign. And so today we welcome um, yet another video uh, or videos to be a part of that. So thank you so much for those who participated. Also, adopt a family. We are seeking gifts of money, monetary gifts. Uh, we want to be able to be purchasing uh, gift cards for uh, the families that we are adopting. It's a great way to help a very important cause in our community, so please be about that. And please, uh, by Sunday the 22nd, we are hoping that people will submit to Tom Nicola uh, their videos of just something quick. What are you thankful for? We would welcome those videos uh, by the 22nd. Also, please remember that we'll be doing Thanksgiving Eve worship the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We will be doing it at 6.30 virtually. And then, hey, join us for a live Zoom uh, fellowship time as we have our pie feast together. So be thinking about your favorite pie that you're going to want to make and join us for that special occasion. And also, just something new that we're going to try this year. Um, be beginning on the first Wednesday in Advent, which is December 2nd, uh, we are going to be doing a quick Advent reflection, you know, 10, 15 minutes, uh, with a prayer, a reading, a reflection, and a, a Advent hymn. And please uh, join us for that. It's going to be, uh, we're going to be premiering that at 6.30 on Wednesday evenings. And it's just a, in the middle of the, in the middle, midst of Advent, midweek, we're just going to pause and reflect. And so we hope that you'll be able to uh, join us for that as well. With those being our announcements, uh, we're going to continue with our prayer of confession. And today we begin our worship service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beckoning God, you invite us to walk the narrow path and to live the life of a servant. Yet we are more concerned with position and prestige, being noticed and appreciated, making sure we are in the right place at the right time. Speak to our hearts that we might trust you for all our days along all our paths with our every need. Teach us the right balance of pride and humility. Instruct us in living with a humble self-esteem that does not neglect the needs of others. Beckoning God, help us to follow on the way that leads to abundant life. Even as we pass through the valleys and shadows, let us follow your call, hear your whisper, and feel your love. Amen. Our opening song.
are called to worship. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. For life and health his cross was born. To him our lives we vow. The highest place that heaven affords is his by sovereign right. Yet here for us the Lord of lords is pleased to grant his life. Let us pray together. God of our joy, we rejoice at the sound of your steps. Our tongues sing to your approach. Here are your fond children. Your attention, our one desire. Holy God, unto whom the angels bend their knees, bring us to that place around your throne where all the holy ones sing your praise. Everlasting glory to your name and to the Son. Amen. We will now have our readings. An introduction to our first lesson. Because Israel's kings proved to be bad shepherds, Ezekiel declares the Lord will assume the role of shepherd in Israel. The Lord will also set over them a shepherd Messiah, my servant David, who will feed and care for the people. The first lesson is from the 34th chapter in Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feel that I would feed them with good pleasure, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be for their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will take them lie down says the lord god i will seek the lost and i will bring back the strayed and i will bind up the injured and i will strengthen the weak but the fat and the strong i will destroy i will feed them with justice therefore thus says the lord god to them i myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep because you push with flank and shoulder and butted out all my weak animals with your horns until you scatter them far and wide i will save my flock and there shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be with God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This ends the first lesson. <laughs> Introduction for our second lesson. In this passage, God is praised for 
revealing ultimate divine power in raising Jesus from the dead. The resurrected, exalted Christ is Lord of both the church and the entire universe, now and in the age to come. A second lesson from the first chapter of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glory among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his us according to the wisdom of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father, right, right hand in heavenly places, far above the moon, all the and authority and power and dominion. And above every name that is named, not only in his age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet uh, as he made, yeah, as he made him the head over all things, which is his body and fullness of him who fills all in all. This ends the second lesson. An introduction for the gospel lesson. Jesus compares himself to a king who moves above, among us such to see how he is treated. He is done for the least of those who belong to his family is truly done for him. The gospel lesson, lesson according to Matthew chapter 25. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another. The shepherd separates its, the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. The king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the fountain of the world. For I was hungry, and you have you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. The righteous will act, answer him lord when it was when it that he, we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink and when was it that we went that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing and when was it that we saw you stick sick or in prison and visited you. And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it, did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed depend Depart from me into the de internal fire, preparing for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me clothing. You gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then he also. Then they also will answer, Lord, when it was. When was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to, into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. I'm going to ask our uh, kids to please come forward at this time for a few moments and to uh, sit on mom or dad's lap. And let's have a few moments to hang out together. And man, I sure miss you guys. I miss sitting on the floor with you up front at church and just kind of hanging out and asking each other some questions and talking about God a little bit. But We'll do the next best thing as we try to be together today, okay? Hey, listen, I wanted to show you a few things that I have here. And here's a couple. Yes, a can of beans and a can of mac, or, or a, a box of mac and cheese. And what's really weird is that our grandkids only eat Annie's. They don't eat generic mac and cheese apparently it's not good enough or something so we gotta spend four times as much on Annie's so anyways uh food and I guess my question for all you kids is you know if we wanted to help somebody what's the best thing we could do if they were hungry maybe share and give them some food right and then I want to show you something else here I have uh these are band-aids if we wanted to help somebody who was hurt or scraped a knee or something, what could we do? We could easily give them a Band-Aid or help put it on or get them a wet cloth and help heal them up a little bit. And then I want to show you something else here. Do you know what this is? Yep, water, water bottle. And if somebody is thirsty and needed something to drink, how could we help them? share right maybe give them a bottle of water or something like that or or uh, help them out in some way or give them a case of water or a gallon of water or a glass of water and if somebody was cold and didn't have enough clothes what is something that we could do yes we could give them something we have to make sure they have clothes for their body and they have something warm or mine as well, so we could share. You know, we have a couple of Bible passages today, or Bible stories. Uh, one is about um, how, you know, God's like a shepherd taking care of all of us who are sheep. And another one is about, you know, being of service to other people and helping other people out who are in need that maybe not everybody wants to help. And Jesus saying, hey, when you do, when you help out somebody, you're helping me out. And you're, you're, you're doing it for me. And see, Jesus is who we represent. And so we do these helpful things for other people. So that people know that we believe in Jesus. And that we're part of Jesus' kingdom. And he's our king. Thanks so much for coming up. You guys have a great day. Peace and love to you guys, okay? <clears throat> I want to tell you a story. Um, when I was in my first call in Oshkosh, and I was behind the ears and didn't know anything about ministry, and yes, some would probably say, Todd, you've been doing this 30 years, and you still don't know anything about ministry, and some days during these days, it definitely feels that way. Uh, but anyways, I just want to take a few moments to, to talk to you about this uh, story. There's a pastor there, an ELCA pastor. His name was uh, Jerry Nierenhausen. And Jerry, 
was very passionate about social ministry. And he and his church uh, at Zion Lutheran did a great job of like, for example, building apartments for uh, affordable uh, elderly living, um, very much socially active throughout the whole community. Well, Jerry had such a reputation, he was invited to a different community to be the guest speaker to an advisory board that was putting together a possible team to think about looking at a homeless shelter in this particular community. And what happened was, is that as soon as Jerry got the invite, about four or five days before his meeting, um, he decided not to shave. He decided not to shower. He, uh, the day of his meeting, he messed up his hair. I'm not going to mess up my hair because that would just like throw me into a hot mess. But he messed up his hair and um, he took a swig of a libation to make it smell like he had alcohol on his breath. And he wore clothes that were wrinkled and an old ripped up jacket. And he went to this meeting and he got there about a half hour early and he was outside in the hallway of where he was supposed to meet. And he just stood and slowly walked up and down the hallway as people who were attending this meeting walked right past him without saying anything. And then he sat on the hallway floor and, and sat up against the wall. And people still walked past him going into the room for this potential homeless shelter advisory board. And every once in a while, the meeting was supposed to start like at 6.30, and every once in a while, people on the advisory board would peek their head up and down the hallway, saying, well, I wonder where our guest is. And they'd peek up and down the hallway, and Jerry let this happen for about 15 minutes. And then what happened was uh, he got up, and he walked into the room, and he said to the advisory team, we have a problem. He said, do you know that not one of you recognized my presence in the hallway? Do you know that not one of you asked me if I needed anything or if I needed help? And I'm sure everybody in that advisory board room about this potential homeless shelter would never forget that meeting. He said, we have a problem. And he talked about how we can say all the right things about, oh, we should fight homelessness or we should help people who need help. But if we don't move on it, it's just idle, empty words. In seminary, we were told time and time again, your words and your actions need to be consistent. Your words and your actions, they need to line up. And that's basically the message of what is going on in Ezekiel. And it's the message also of what's going on in uh, Matthew's gospel today. You know, well, Jesus, when did we feed you, clothe you, give you something to drink, take care of you? And Jesus ends it and says, when you did this to the least of me, to the least of these, he did it for me and to me. And in Ezekiel, the prophet talks about the Lord being the shepherd and talking about how the shepherd is going to make sure that he goes and seeks the lost sheep. He's going to make sure he goes, the shepherd's going to go and find the stray sheep. He's going to make sure he goes and finds the sheep that are hurt and carry them and bring them back. And for those sheep that are weak, he will strengthen them. And I guess the thrust of all of this means for us as Christians, as kids of the kingdom, is that it's not just our words that matter. Our actions matter. Our behavior matters. And as kids of the kingdom, we have to make sure that our words and our actions and behaviors line up and that it represents the king. 
and that it represents a shepherd. You know, um, in the Old Testament, you know, the imagery of a shepherd, yeah, it was about showing that compassion and being charitable and helping somebody out who needed help. But the, the imagery of shepherd in the Old Testament also uh, has some political connotation saying, well, wherever the root of the hurt is, is causing the root of the, whatever is causing the hurt, the root of that, fix it. It could be structurally. You know? And that's Old Testament. And so our words matter. But you know what matters more? Our actions, our behaviors. Do they line up with the shepherd? Do they line up? Do our words and actions and behaviors line up and give glory to the king and the king's reign? I tell us this because some days it's hard when my words and actions don't line up and I need to be realigned. And maybe you have days like that too, if we're just being totally, total disclosure and being 100 with each other. Yeah, some days, you know what? I wish my actions lined up a little bit more to my words. And I know it's in those moments that I need to ask God to realign me and put me right and put me in a rightness and relationship with him again. And that's not always easy. And so I share all this. One is because we have adoptive family coming up. And yes, adoptive family is going to look way different than we imagined this year. We're seeking money to buy gift cards. We're not taking gifts. I know it's not the same. I'm sorry for that. But that action of writing a check, that behavior of putting money in the envelope and writing on the front of the envelope, adopt a family, saying, yes, even in this moment, even though if we can't help those who are lost or hurt or stray, we're going to still do it to the least of these because then we're doing it for Christ, for Jesus. And so I want to encourage all of us to think about the things that matter, not only our words and our behaviors and our actions, but you know what? The people that we don't notice matter. The people whose presence we don't recognize walking down the hallway matter. The people who we don't think belong or are worthy of another chance matter. We're told that in Ezekiel, we're t in the Old Testament, we're told that in Matthew's Gospel, these matter. Your words matter. Your actions and behavior matter. And it matters that you do it for those who need help. And sometimes when my words and actions aren't aligned, and they're not lining up quite right, and I need to be realigned, what helps me is to remember who I belong to. This has been a crazy fall, right? I mean, we have the pandemic. And you know what? Even that's become a little political, how we approach the pandemic. But no matter how you feel about that, that doesn't give you your full identity. We've had the election. Some are excited about the outcome, whatever it is, and some aren't. Some are hoping for somebody different. That's not our identity at the end of the day. What is, our, what is important for us is that those things, it doesn't matter who we voted for, red, blue, purple. It doesn't matter how we feel about the pandemic and the best approach. Mask, no mask, that doesn't define us. That's not our defining moment. What is important is for us to remember whose we are. 
whose we are. Who do we belong to? And we're reminded at our baptism, we are kids of the kingdom. We are God's kid forever. And our words, our actions, our behaviors matter to those who sometimes go unnoticed in the hallways. grateful for First United Lutheran Church for doing baptisms during the pandemic. Our daughter was born at the end of February and I contacted Pastor Todd about doing a baptism. We decided we were going to do it during summer because I was convinced the church would be open back up. But since it wasn't, Pastor Todd graciously agreed to do a private baptism in our backyard. On a 90 degree day, wearing masks six feet apart, Pastor Todd, myself, my husband, my son Thomas, and Kaylee were in attendance for our baptism. There was a special part during the baptism where the congregation was supposed to speak, and Pastor Todd said, I'll speak for the congregation. We were lucky that we were able to do it while she was still a baby, because there's a special baptismal gown that is in our family from 1913. Four generations have worn this gown. My daughter Kaylee, my son Thomas, myself, my father, my grandmother and her brother. We are so thankful that even during the pandemic, 
Grace United Lutheran Church still does things to make it special. Thank you. Great Beginnings Preschool offered a great experience for our grandson. Last year, he was enrolled two mornings a week. Ellen and Kelly were wonderful, caring, and enthusiastic. They were very skilled at offering a terrific learning environment. The variety of activities ranged from focusing on early literacy skills to fostering artistic endeavors. Children had group activities as well as individual exploration times. I know our grandson was sad when he couldn't be with his teachers and peers because of the pandemic. But there were some packets sent home and opportunities to have interaction using Zoom. This was helpful to offer some consistency and a transition from school to home instruction. We are fortunate to have a wonderful learning opportunity for young children for growing and developing under the auspices of quality teachers right here in the church facility. My wife and I have been associated with the Thursday service since its inception. It is great seeing many of the same people each week and having an engaging contemporary service. The music is lovely and focuses on newer hymns with words on a screen so people can participate in singing. Historically, we attended the summer evening worship service at D-Land Park, which had other churches being responsible for content and treats during the summer months. As church chose not to continue with evening services, First United decided to offer this experience to members throughout the year. We enjoyed coming home from work and going to church for uplifting and meaningful readings and sermons. The message given on Thursday and Sunday is the same. We enjoyed being part of the service by ushering. When the pandemic struck and services went virtual, we were excited that Thursday evening services continue to be an option. We've been virtual worship readers, but our ushering responsibilities will have to wait. Please join us Thursday evening virtually and in person when it is safe to return to church. We appreciate First United's varied opportunities to attend worship services. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, we give you thanks for sending Christ to be our King. We give you thanks for the imagery of you being our shepherd and we being your sheep. That when we're lost, you'll come and find us. When we go astray, you will bring us back to the flock and remind us of who we are meant to be. When we are hurt, you'll carry us. God, we pray that we might remember that our behavior matters. Our actions matter. God, we pray that our words and our deeds and our actions and our behavior would line up for your kingdom's reign because you are our king. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray this day for those who are in need of comfort and those who are in need of healing. We pray for Carol and Sally, for Vicki and Gail, for Linda and Gib. We pray for Patty, Grant, and Mary. We pray for Rick and Paula 
and Arlene. We pray for Alyssa and Julie and Matt, for Kristen and Robin, for Gert, for Becky, for Mary Jane, for Ginny, for Sue and for Lori, for Pat and Ben and Wendy. We pray for Betty and Jerry and Ron. We pray for Wally and Sandy, Gary and Diane, Marion and Bob, Darlene and Joe and Gloria. We pray for Cindy and Doris and Carl. God, we pray this day for the family of Jean Craney. As they grieve her passing, give them comfort and hope of the resurrection. God, we pray this day for Fred and Carrie as Fred's mom enters the twilight of her days and is getting ready to come home to you. We pray that Fred and Carrie would know your presence. And God, we take a moment of silence to lift up before you others for whom we name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there's so much for us to be thankful for, even in the midst of these days. We thank you for the big blessings and the small blessings that you give to us. And we pray, God, that we might count them and that we might be blessed to be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now collect our offering. Let us share the offertory prayer. Let us pray together. What looks like just money is actually much more. It is a symbol of what we do with our days and our talents. It is a return on our in indebtedness to you, O oh God. And it is by your grace that we are able to give it. Amen. At this time, we are going to get ready to share Holy Communion together, and you're asked to get your elements uh, ready so that we can do that. And what's going to happen is that I will start off with the with the Great Thanksgiving, and then we will uh, break to a brief interlude where you and or you and your family uh, can read the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer, and give each other communion, the Body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And then we will rejoin each other in just a few moments with a post-communion blessing and prayer. We continue now with our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our closing song. benediction. Enable us, O Lord, to go forth into the world joyful and unashamed of the gospel, which nurtures all who receive it and offers eternal hope to all servants of Christ. You have blessed us as we have worshipped. Support us now as we go forth to labor wherever your spirit directs. May your love, mercy, and peace be ours and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.